Hello Foam Warriors, I'm Dr. Flux. In today's video, we're taking a look at a build guide of the Hummingbird. Let's jump right into it. <laughs> video we're going to go through and take a step-by-step -step approach. This is kind of like a build log because uh, I didn't see any build guides or anything online. I know this is relatively a simple blaster to work on but I figured I might as well make a video for it because I don't see one out there for a good build guide. Now as I'm doing the build on this you'll see that I'm truly in love with this thing. It's engineered very well, or just designed very well in general. The overall con construct of it is sturdy, it's strong, it, it just is very aesthetically pleasing, it looks amazing. It takes advantage of furniture from real steel environments, so you can put your mag pole and your, your tube stock stuff on here. Um, a lot of options. The battery tray can hold a 3S pretty easily. I mean, this has a lot of capability. Before we get started, I just want to know there were some errors with the uh, the instructions with, that came with the files, and uh, it kind of made me have to adjust my build. So, if you're building along with me, please watch this video first, and then you can uh, see the the pitfalls that I went through. Uh, the main one was the wiring. Uh, just just to throw it out there right off the bat. Uh, the wiring, they talk about using a normally open and normally closed. Uh, it was wrong. So uh, just pay attention to that. Watch the video if you're looking to do a build with this. And uh, other than that, it's flawless. I have no problem. Let's go ahead and jump right in. All right. Let's go ahead and dive into this build. Now, this build utilizes a part list that can pretty much be sourced out from a McMaster car. If you purchase this uh, SDL from the creator, he will include a, uh, a list of all the, the stuff you need to print and all the hardware you need. One thing about this build that I liked is it actually uses screw inserts. And these things, uh, you heat up the plastic and you actually push them into the, uh, the locations. That way, this blaster can be taken apart and put back together many times without, you know, stripping screws and all that kind of stuff. So very nice design there. The overall design of this blaster is very ergonomic and it utilizes some very good engineering concepts. It gives you plenty of space to work in here. It is very easy to, to print out. Uh, everything is kind of simplified and it's just, it's just overall engineered very well. I can just already tell from how the pieces kind of fit together. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with the, uh, the inserts. There it, it, uh, the kit requires 25 of them. I think I had to order a hundred. So I will be sending some of these parts to Walcom so he can also do his build. Uh, so, and then I need to do another build for my brother. So I think in the end, I won't have too much left over, but uh, yeah, just keep in mind, if you order from McMaster car, you're gonna have enough parts. Uh, if you want to or not, you're gonna have enough parts to pretty much make several of these blasters. So keep that in mind. It's pretty good to do a a bulk order with some friends or whatnot, or just just have one person do the order. Everyone kind of chip in money, and this will be actually relatively cheap. All right, let's see where the inserts are going. It says threaded inserts should be installed with a soldering iron in the following location. So we got the rear receiver. It says there's ten. So let's go ahead and do the ones I know for a fact. So what I'm seeing is there is a little lip inside it. So if it's a solid hole all the way through, you're good. It's a pin insert, but if there's a little lip in there, that means the piece that goes behind this will require an insert. So we know right here that just these two are gonna need inserts. And now to make sure these get inserted the right way, from the design of these, it looks like they're toothed outward, so you wanna shove them in that way. Okay, pretty straightforward. That works like a dream. And they need to be flush, so let me just go a little bit further. Ok, 
Okay. Beautiful. Yeah, that is really cool. I really like that design. I hope more uh, creators and engineers and designers for this hobby utilize this technique. This is very nice. I am very impressed with this. And from a quick glance, I could tell if you accidentally drive these in too far, it's actually not going to hurt anything because uh, you got plenty of uh, room on the actual screws to kind of work in there and grab on. So you're going to want to try to be flush at least. It just looks a lot better. It looks more professional. Now the hardest part with this is you want to make sure not to touch the shell at all, obviously. So you can create some damage pretty quick by brushing up against the shell. Just be mindful of that. It's kind of like you're playing operations sometimes. So we got two that go in the back, back here. We have three on the interior, it says. It says on the left hand side, which is this side, we have three. So one, two. And I guess in three, or no, three. So that means there's three on this side and two on this, so that's these two. Um, which, that's gonna be a problem for me to get in there. It's probably gonna be this one right here. Let's just uh, move on, because I just don't wanna mess something up. We will revisit that one. Let's do the uh, front receiver. It says the front receiver has a total of four. Has one on the top, one on the left, one on the right, that doesn't equal four. Top one, left one, right one. Oh, I think they're saying top two. Okay. Yeah, so there's two on the top here and then left and right. So let's go ahead and do those. Yeah, if you have, when you use the pens, they have a nice flat head on them. Just go ahead and Make sure it's flush because you don't want to shove it too far in, but obviously you don't want to touch it with your fingers because it's super hot. So I'm just kind of making it flush with the head of that. All right, so I kind of sunk a little bit and that's fine, but I'm going to screw it in and I'm just going to pull this up a little bit and let it cool down and it should be fine. Like I have a little warping on the side here. You just kind of push that in, push that down. As it's as it's cooling, you just want to make sure it's setting properly because this area is a little close to the edge. You can warp that out. So I just kind of pack that, push that in as it cools. Okay, so this piece is done. So it's all four. Let's see what else we have. Motor mounts. It says there's three on the motor mounts. And make sure that's flush. Beautiful. So that's the motor mount. Uh, we could almost just mount those now. Wow. If I need to do more cleaning on these. And we're using the uh, the Krakens. They recommended Krakens. I got these from Out of Darts. You can also do a brushless motor build. I just decided to keep this cost down and just go with a traditional brushed motor. All right, so we have those pressed in. 
uh, we'll be doing uh, motor screws with uh, Loctite. But I'm not gonna. I'm gonna move on to the next part for now. Okay, so the buffer tube has two screws or two of these that go into the sides. So as you can see here, we got them mounted in here. That mount like that, and then the side ones. And we got the rails, which I have two printed out right now. I will, I'll be printing out another rail uh, later, but for now, we're just gonna do the two. Okay, the rails are good. And all right, now we can start assembly. So let's start in the main body. Oh, huh. I'm sorry, I totally forgot these internal ones. We still have three inside here I need to take care of. Okay, so obviously this pusher assembly goes on here. So let's go ahead and pull this off. Screw this one on here. Okay, flywheels. Let's get that mounted. So let's grab some motor screws and some Loctite. I believe this tool right here is for seating the flywheels, so you can't push them too far down. I believe these are Twilights from Drac. So that is a perfect seat. So that's a pretty handy little tool. You pull that out and you are ready to go. Uh, most of the build is done with M3 times 10. It looks like that's what goes in here. Go ahead and wire up the motors now.
Ice cream? Ice cream? I think there's ice cream. Okay, now that we got the motors wired up, let's see if we can mount this. I think I went out of sequence. Uh, let's pull this off real quick. It looks like uh, you just, you're just you supposed to mount this on here first, so let's go ahead and mount this down. This guy looks like some type of guide. Pretty sure the switches sit like this. And it looks like we're probably gonna have to cut this one. I'm gonna go ahead and chop it. Yeah, so those just go in like that. I'll go ahead and wire that in a bit. So that means the trigger would go here. And this looks to be a, okay, so that's the guide for the trigger. The instruction calls to uh, make sure to lubricate this whole area. I will be lubricating this with some uh, worker grease. All right, so that makes sense. And then back here must be where the other switch goes. Let's go ahead and cut that one as well. just to kind of get all the placement down. And that one. So let's see which spring goes in there. It appears there is a spring hole here. And I think it might be this one right here. Okay, so I, I had a few items that I realized I needed to print. One being the mag release, and the other being the other side of this rail. Just went in there and did the same procedure where I put in these two things in there. And I've already just attached all these pieces. I've also tested the directions of the flywheel, and I ended up having to switch it because I was wrong. I just like to keep red as positive and black is negative obviously just for simplicity's sake but we are now shooting in the right direction so we're going to continue wiring the switches yeah so this will be going to calm The way this system works, you can't engage the pusher 
without spinning up the flywheels because as soon as you pull the trigger, the flywheels kick on. So pretty cool, keeps it simple. So let's go ahead and wire up the next switch. This one is gonna be wired to the, uh, the back. And this will be going to the solenoid. Gotta get this to the front where the lipo is going to be, which will be up here. So we'll just go ahead and feed down in here. I'll give it some slack. Don't need too much, but basically we're gonna go come up and around, and we're just gonna hop right into this line. We'll just throw a little tape on that so we don't have problems in there. All right, mount that back down. Oh no. Oh, that's fine. We can just trim that. Made it a little bit too long. Oh, that's right, these are a little bit longer. And we just feed the, uh, the negative down in there along with the flywheel negative all right we might as well throw solenoid or secure the solenoid okay on the parts list that is the that would be the m4 it's the m4 times 10 so it's it's a a thicker one. They asked for two of them, so that's only the only two you'll need. Yeah, it's good practice not to tighten stuff down until you get all of them uh, not cross-threading. There we go. And you know what I forgot is <laughs> the switches. All right, let me pull that out. Alright, so first up is this guy. Alright, so it comes with two springs. We've got a small spring and a larger spring. The small spring, I believe, goes up in the mag release, whereas this one is for the trigger. So, uh, yeah, it just goes in there. It seems to just rest against the switch. And then this one, they're calling for... Uh, Got to lubricate this, this whole section here. And also, 
the size of the switch here where the where it hits the wall. Now for the mag release. Go ahead and grab a Talon mag just to make sure that works. Okay, got a 3D printed one here actually. Oh, it works. Now we can put the solenoid back in. Get this uh, XT60 done. Now that is the end of the positive lead. Let's go ahead and do this. Well, before we do that, we might as well test. So let's strip these off and test it. So, let's see, power, I just followed what he said I thought, and I guess I'm wrong. So, so brush build, it says uh, wire motors to the front switch using normally open COM terminals. So, it should be normally closed. We'll see if the, pop, let's see if the flywheels turn off when I pull that first trigger. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's like reversed. This front one should be normally closed. This one back here should be normally open. So, looks like the instructions are wrong. And I kind of thought that as I read it, but I was like, huh, well, if they say it, I was going to wire it up that way. Wire the solenoid to the rear switch using norm or normally closed and calm. No, it's supposed to be normally open and calm. All right, let me rewire this. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you stuck around to the end, thank you very much. It's amazing, because this was a long one. If you want to see more content like this, 
please let me know because these type of videos take a lot of time and energy and effort. I think these videos are important for the community to help people not be so nervous to jump into a project like this. It is a bit overwhelming if this is the first type of build you've ever done. So hopefully videos like this will kind of help people, you know, take the first step into starting on a 3D printed blaster. I think if you're looking to get an FDL, I think this is not a bad alternative. You can enter this ecosystem pretty cheaply compared to an FDL. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you can see when I make new content. And as always, happy nerfing.